Welcome back to Investor Intel at PDAC 2018. I'm pleased to be joined by Mark Chalmers. Mark is the CEO of Energy Fuels. Mark, uranium and vanadium have both been in the uh, news a lot lately. First of all, can you comment on uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the market and particularly what's going on politically in the U.S.? Well, look, at uh, uranium itself uh, is, is historically been a political kind of element. And sure. um, I mean, we as a company um, uh, with uh, UR Energy, we filed a Section 232 a trade petition uh, to limit imports of uranium into the United States. Now, uh, Section 232 is quite in the media a lot right now with the steel and aluminum. So uh, I think people didn't know what Section 232 even meant uh, up until a few days ago when um, the Trump administration, uh, after a review by the Department of Commerce, uh, is um, looking at imposing uh, tariffs on uh, imports from various forms from different countries. So we as a company, we actually started this process about a year ago and uh, we felt that the, uh, the, the, the low level of production in the United States, the United States is the largest uh, consumer of uranium in the world, but we're only actually producing uh, less than 5% of our requirements. So the Section 232 is a, a, a trade act um, that is uh, driven for um, uh, any type of uh, uh, commodity like uh, uranium or, or vanadium uh, or in the cases of steel or aluminum uh, that may have uh, national security implications. And um, so that is what we've uh, put in with your energy. Well, I think that would be a pretty compelling case that uranium is an important strategic, uh, strategic uh, element. Um, on that basis, you know, you guys are already a producer. Obviously, a U.S. producer would be extremely benefited by any kind of ruling under uh, 232. Yeah, we would be benefited, um, naturally. Um, uh, but the, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, we want to be reasonable with this Section 232. I mean, we want to survive as an industry. The nuclear industry in the United States uh, has been challenged with uh, natural gas and uh, the uh, increase in renewables lately. So. Um, we don't want to be greedy here, but we do think that a front end of the nuclear fuel cycle is required in the United States. So, so it's really, again, when we talk about uh, national um, security issues, it's not just Department of Defense. It's really more focused on the nuclear power generation industry for the electricity. Because 20% of our electricity um, comes from nuclear. Well, with the, uh, you know, sometimes people are... Uh you know, not don't regard uranium production as being something that's particularly green. But from my understanding of your business, you guys provide some very green services, not only in how you process your own materials, but also in cleaning up other projects or uh, other mining operations. Is that correct? Yeah, we have uh, our White Mesa mill in Utah uh, is the only remaining uh, conventional mill in the United States that's operable. And um, we have uh, two sources of revenue for, with that facility. We have what we call alternate feed, which is, is basically taking uh, out of spec material or low level material um, that uh, we can actually um, uh, run through the mill and recover the uranium and uh, repackage. And we're basically recycling uh, products that had uh, uranium in it. Uh, in a lot of cases, returning that to wherever we got it from, like it could be uh, a, a major other mining company that had a stream that was unusable otherwise, and that's what we call alternate feed. Um, but in addition to that, we are also as a company um, looking at doing cleanups of former uranium mines, most of which were mined uh, in the 50s and 60s during the Cold War, uh, largely subsidized by the United States government. And the EPA has uh, collected um, around $2 billion of cleanup funds in trust uh, on the Navajo Nation alone. So uh, we're looking at using our facility, which is just a short distance from the Navajo Nation, and providing a service where we can take uh, low-level uh, radioactive material left from that period of time, the 50s and 60s, uh, recover the uranium from that material, and dispose of it safely in our facility. Well, there's a lot to the story. What should investors should be What should investors be looking for right now as a reason to own energy fuels? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, we're, we're primarily a uranium-focused production company. Um, that's number one. Uh, the Section 232 and what that could do to our company in terms of stimulating and providing an inflection point. Um, if that uh, review of that petition, which we think will happen, will go forward, um, and also the vanadium space because we have historically produced. 
um, quite a lot of uh, vanadium from the assets that we have. And over the course of the last 38 years, we produced over 45 million pounds of vanadium. At current prices, that's in excess of $500 million of vanadium. So there's um, some real interest in vanadium um, for uh, steel hardening, which has been the normal use, but also vanadium flow batteries for renewable energy uh, storage uh, systems. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah.